How do we really make a difference in our cities? We make a difference by going after the big problems in our cities. And one of the biggest challenges that we face are kids that are abandoned. Kids who are in the foster care system, kids who need to be adopted, kids who are breaking the heart of God. Transformational leadership grapples with the big problems. And, and we're talking today with a transformational leader, Connie Clendenin, CEO of Valley Teen Ranch. And Connie not only does great things with kids who are coming in through the juvenile justice system, but also has a foster family agency and an adoption agency making a huge difference here in Fresno and the Valley. This is our city, and I'm H. Spees. It belongs to you, it belongs to me, this is our city. Connie, it's great to have you here on, on our program, and uh, we're, I, I'm grateful because you're my friend. That's we've, right. We've known each other for over 20 years. We're family. We're family. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was uh, head of Youth for Christ, and you were there starting Valley Teen Ranch and, and really getting the, the ground and the foundation under Valley Teen Ranch in those early years. 21 years. Can you believe that? Fantastic. And, and now Valley Teen Ranch is in Madera County. Tell me and tell our guests a little bit about uh, the layout there at the ranch. I've been there many times, but they, they need to see it in their minds. We have an 80-acre ranch located in the Madera Ranchos at Avenue 12 and Road 35, surrounded by pistachio orchards and vineyards and pasture. And on that 80 acres, we have 32 boys that live there right. in three group homes, residential group homes licensed by the state of California. We have a school there in partnership with Golden Valley Unified School District. It's a community day school just for our boys. Mm. It's boys only, and they're all teenagers from ages 13 to 17, and they come to us through the court system from the juvenile division of counties all over the state. But we wow. kind of take priority over the local kids, the San Joaquin Valley kids. You love our Valley kids. We do. But you have kids from all over California, and, and the thing that makes it, it different at Valley Teen Ranch, and I've I have visited, I, I used to serve, as you know, as chairman of the Juvenile Justice Commission yes. here in Fresno County. And, and so I've been an inspector in group homes throughout the community. And there are some places where kids are just being warehoused. But yours is an oasis. You're, you're, you have always had the gold standard for caring for kids coming out of juvenile delinquency. Thank you. And we're a pattern of a program that my dad started in Michigan in the early 60s when I was just a kid. And so we're a replica of that program. We didn't reinvent the wheel. That was called? Michigan Teen Ranch. And here we and, are, Valley Teen Ranch. Yes. And the, the things that are unique about our residential group homes are that we're rural, that we have men and women that are staff. Started with house parents, but now it's just men and women that yep. work a 10-hour shift. And then we also have the school. We have a recreational program, vocational program. And the kids are there because they're a mess. They're broken. They don't have dads. They're angry. They're behind in school. They feel like a loser, like a nobody. But they want to be a somebody. And they've been in gangs, drugs, fights, the you know rejects. Your mama's a crackhead. They've heard that all their life. Mm. So when they come to us at 14, 15, 16, for the year that they stay with us, we try to help them mentally in our school, socially, relationships with their peers and with adults. Physically, they're strong, healthy, running, get out of the bed. We're not just sitting there playing video games working. all day. Working, yes, having balanced meals, regular sleep, and spiritually, to understand that God made you and God don't make no junk. That's kind of how we start with them. One of the great things I love about the ranch is your Lazy Susan. Everybody sits mm -hmm. for every meal. They sit yes. around a huge round table with a Lazy Susan right in the middle. It's just like home on the ranch. Right. And we try to help them to share during that time. And there's a pecking order where they sit around that table. Depends on how well they're doing in the program. That's one of their privileges. And everybody gets the same amount of food, the same kind of food, but who starts first and then slowly goes around the table and who ends up last, which now the first guy's probably already finished eating. 
Um, but it's just one of those things and conversations and respect <coughs> and who set the table and who cleans the table like a family. Okay, so you, you're wrestling with this huge problem of juvenile delinquency and it wasn't enough to have three homes for 32 kids on a rotating basis and I met some of those kids Jerry and Hedda who have mm -hmm. graduated and become successful but but you wanted to do more and so you started a foster family agency and an adoption agency right one at a time foster care means we recruit we train we supervise and we certify foster parents loving couples that are out there that want to make a difference in the life of a child single people can do it too but if a single person decides to do this, they have to have a backup who can babysit and be there when they get out of school or they're sick or whatever. So we recruit them, we gave them superb training, and then our social workers are with them every single week in their home. Wow. And we're available 24-7 to be able to help solve problems, find resources, work through issues to try to help that child stabilize and be there for the long term. One of the things that we're, we want this show to highlight is the opportunity that our uh, viewing audience has to sign up to be a foster parent or an adoptive parent. Now, you have, uh, with the help of Jeff Hall at Maximus Video, you have provided for us two more guests That's that right. we're going to look at with, through video clips. Alberto and Christine. Alberto and Christine Rodriguez. They yes. are incredible people. I love these clips, and I'm so grateful that they can be with us through the means of, uh, of these vid this video interview. So let's, let's go and, and hear how Albert and Christine Rodriguez got involved as foster parents. We had been trying to have kids, and we, w we were both working full-time, but we wanted to um, start a family, and so I had quit, and we were um, trying to have children, and it just wasn't happening, and um, I kept hearing Connie on the radio, because I worked for Fresno County, and I kept hearing her on the radio, because only at the AM stations, and, um, but I would just think, you, later on down the road, we're going to do foster care, later on, not now, you know, and... Um, but our friend Onesimo, who worked here, kept saying, you know, you guys should be foster parents. I think you guys would be really good foster parents. There's such a need. And we'd say, no, 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 you know, we just can't. And he ended up turning our names in. And it kind of went from there. A dirty rat, yeah. yeah. Cause, cause who we blame now? But hey, it, turned, it turned out really neat. Yeah. It's been an adventure. Well, our first foster daughter was a pregnant 15-year-old. So that was kind of a wild ride in itself for your induction of um, having foster children. But it was a blessing because in the end, um, her... Um, her baby we ended up adopting so um, she after she lived with us for a while and she trusted us and she said you know I'm too young I, I'm, I'm not ready to parent would you adopt my baby and we were like no you'll change your mind you know we, but we'll help you and, but she meant it and we ended up adopting her and she's now 10 years old we've had 38 about 38 foster kids six of them we've adopted and it's yes like I said before it's been an adventure it's a new meaning to uh, I was a stranger and you took me in. That's what we've done, is taken some strangers in. And uh, we think sometimes uh, strangers are danger, but it's been a blessing. Yeah. It's been amazing how uh, God has changed our hearts and changing the children's hearts just by being together and, and taking them to uh, uh, church functions and taking them to uh, camp, taking them to uh, spiritual retreats. And uh, one of the big events that we do is Spirit West Coast. And we've noticed that it's been really effective with the younger teenagers that when we take them to these camps, um, they're exposed to, to the things of God and the music of God, and God just captures their heart and begins to clean them up. And it, it becomes uh, fairly easy after that. 